The Fakenham Medical Practice in Norfolk has been treating and caring for patients from its surgery for 25 years. A lot has changed in that quarter of a century and it's about to make a dramatic transformation with the building of a new medical centre, all in partnership with its patients. Dr David Bennett is an executive partner and has been with the practice for 18 years. We've had two open meetings organised by the patient participation group and we feel that that has, been, has created a constructive dialogue. And the message we get time and again is people want to know what's going on. Work on the new surgery commenced with the help of the local MP. Patient participation groups are partnerships between practices and patients who want to both support their surgery and reflect the patient view. What PPGs do varies, but typically they might improve communication through newsletters or websites, organise health promotion events in partnership with the practice, help with big events like flu clinics, run services to meet local need such as volunteer transport, prescription delivery or patient libraries, and be a soundboard for the practice, providing advice and influencing commissioning. I think there are two main things that people are worried about. One is loss of control of the management of their own practice. And secondly, um, people fear that the patient participation group might become dominated by one or two characters. I've heard the, the same things. If you'd spoken to me 15 years ago, I'd have said the same things. The patient experience will become increasingly important um, from the point of view of measuring what we are providing and in some, to some extent in how we are funded. Something like the PPG can only improve our ability to improve the patient experience. The patient participation group at Fakenham has been active for two years and the results are already being seen. Gloria Lisha led the way in forming the group. Make sure that you have a wide age range. You're a welcoming group and you value whatever commitment they have. And everyone clearly has something to offer. If you want to know what's happening in your community, and particularly one of the most important areas, health, whatever your age, whatever your background, uh, they'll give you an opportunity to speak. Chief Executive John Fraser is in no doubt that the local community should play its part in running a modern practice. We will have to listen more to what our patients are saying to make certain we get it right. Even with this new build here, we've had the patient participation group go out and look at other surgeries, come back with lots of new ideas, and where it's been feasible within the uh, cost boundaries we have, uh, we hope to implement those uh, suggestions. And if you don't like it, join the group and have your say. And here's another example of how patients can help. This is Jean on her way to Holt surgery. It's a rural area and travel can be a real challenge to those without the means to get to and from appointments. This is exactly the kind of voluntary service that Gloria, the patient participation group and Faken and Medical Practice want to develop. For Jean, it's a lifeline. When my husband became too ill, my late husband came too ill to drive. And as I don't drive, it's a godsend. Peter Benson is chair of Holt Area Caring Society, which has been running the service for 30 years. On average, we do about 50, between 50 and 60 journeys a week. It just is a huge benefit, I think, to the community. It's such a weight off your mind to know that you can get there without worrying anyone. The neighbours are very good, but you don't like to keep asking them and the family. They have their own lives to lead. Norman Cooker is a past chair of the Caring Society. He's now part of the local practice's patient participation group, providing a voice for the community on issues affecting their health care. It's an important part of modern life for medical practices not to hide behind their uh, professional cover, for patients to find out as much as they can about how things work and how things develop and where there are problems, where they need to know about them and need to try to support. It's, it's similar in any walk of life, I think. In general practice, at a consultation level and at a practice level, we ought to look to be patient-centred. You can't be patient-centred unless you know what the patients want, what the individual patient sat here wants, or what the patient population as a whole want. And the patient participation group allows you to hear what's being said and get messages out. It, it, improves communication. 
So to find out if your GP practice has a PPG, pop in and ask the practice manager or reception staff. For advice on how to set up a PPG, visit the National Association of Patient Participation website www.nap.org.uk and download the step-by-step -step guide to setting up a PPG. You can also contact the Patients Advice and Liaison Service, PALS, here's the website, or ring 0800 587 4132.